Good morning. My name is Andy Klemp. I'm kind of local. I actually live in downtown Valparaiso, but I farm in Wheatfield, DeMott, Madariville, Rensselaer with uh, my dad and my uncle and my brother and a couple other helpers. So Klemp Farms, Inc., that's us. We uh, grow about 3,800 acres. We raise non-GMO corn, uh, commercial corn, some seed corn production, organic grains, Liberty soybeans, and we have a custom finishing swine operation. We consider ourselves farmers building soils. That's, that's our basic goal for our farm. We aren't just farming to uh, uh, grow a cash crop and make money. We're, we're actually looking at our soil every year too and trying to build it up. Increasing organic matter to uh, have more roots, carbon with cover crops and more carbon being sequestered by doing less tillage. We used to be a pretty conventional chisel plow, field cultivate type operation and, and now we're basically vertical tillage. We run an inline ripper, a vertical tillage tool and uh, just do the, the minimum amount of tillage that we need to. Increasing soil life, more food above and below ground for the soil livestock and using products and practices that support soil life. So every product and fertilization plan that we have for the whole year, we consider what it's going to do to the soil life, not just for our cash crop for that year. And like I said, the practices we use, uh, we use track tractors for the most part to try and limit compaction across our fields. We do the least amount of tillage that we have to do. We use a lot of manures, and when we do that, we built toolbars on our spreaders that are minimal disturbance, but still get that manure injected in the ground. So it's all about adding value to the land by changing its productivity. That's, that's our big goal, and that's why we use cover crops. And it also adds dollars in our pocket because we have increased the productivity of our, of our land. And we are also being the best stewards that we can be. We know that we're, we're trying our best. We're giving it our all, doing everything that we can here. Organic matter. This is a soil pit from our farm, I think, two years ago. And here, uh, I think this was an annual ryegrass with some radishes and rapeseed and some other things. But uh, what you basically see here is mostly annual ryegrass roots, and they go very deep. This is one of my favorite covers that we use. Here's pictures. That's probably about 36 inches that you see top to bottom in that photo. There at the bottom you can see roots hanging out from where we dug it out there, the bobcat. So increased water holding capacity. What is it worth to you? For our farm we have average CECs of around seven. I know that's a lot different than up here but you cross eight here and you start getting south a couple miles and soil types change a lot. And for us, we need to increase our organic matter so we can increase how much water we can hold and what's going to be delivered to our crops later that year. 1% organic matter can be one inch of rainfall held, uh, 1,000 pounds of nitrogen, 100 pounds of P, 100 pounds K, 100 pounds S, plus all the other micronutrients and everything else that we look for. And, and we are either buying nutrients every year or we can build organic matter and supply them. So on some of our fields, um, using our soil tests, we've seen that we've gone from 1% to 3% organic matter. We probably average 1, 1 1.5 on our farm just because we're sandy soils. So when we're building and getting up to that 3%, that's, that is huge for us. That is just awesome. And that's our goal. So we're extremely happy about that. And our soil test levels have also been increasing drastically, which... That is something that we didn't really expect, but it's something we've seen where, where our K levels have jumped up. It used to be like 200 pounds to the acre, and now we got 400 pounds to the acre available. So there's a whole lot of recycling going on with all those roots and, and cover crops, bringing stuff from down below, mining it up, depositing it on top, and then you just recycle it over and over between your cover crops and your cash crops. These are radishes. Uh, we use radishes a lot. Most of our mixes have them. And uh, basically we look at those as nutrient storehouses. We also use annual ryegrass, cereal rye, and like I said, radishes. Uh, we use rapeseed sometimes. This year we use some clover. So we're using all these things to hold on to leftover nitrogen, PKS, 
micronutrients, all that stuff. And we're also holding on to fall applied manure nutrients. We used to fall apply our hog manure and we basically would consider the nitrogen gone by the next year, no credit for that crop. But now with the uh, radishes and other things, those radishes will take it up right away. And we've seen side by sides of where we put manure and not put manure and the radishes are totally different colors. So we know that they're all uptaking the, uh, the nutrients we apply that fall. And then when they decompose by that next spring, we'll have an annual ryegrass or a cereal rye that starts picking up those nutrients as, as they're being dropped out of the radish. And then we'll go and we'll burn that down and it's starting to release then slowly throughout the rest of the year for our cash crop. So can commercial fertilizer do that for you? And I know that, you know, for nitrogen, yeah, we can buy stabilizers and things like that that can kind of space out your, your available nitrogen, but at what cost are you gonna pay for those things too? when you could use a cover crop that could do that plus many other things for you. So a lot of benefits. This is a picture of corn this last year when I was scouting in the summer. That was kind of a eye awakening, awakening moment for me, seeing the root exudates coming off of those brace roots on the corn. It's something I've heard about before and I've seen in some textbooks, but I've just never seen it in person. I thought that was pretty cool to be able to see that coming out of the, uh, the brace roots. That mucilage, it's, it attracts and maintains moisture, and one gram holds 1,000 grams of water. So it's like superfood, kind of, and that superfood is going down into the soil and feeding all your biology there. So it's, it's part of that whole ecosystem. The, the plants are feeding the soil, soil feeding the plants. Everything works together. And in our sands, too, like the last few weeks, we've had a lot of blowing. Guys still doing a lot of tillage. There was a sandstorm around, it was crazy. But uh, when you start getting this stuff in your soils, then it's, it's a glue that binds everything together. And our soils, they don't blow like the neighbors do. So how to apply, when to apply. That picture you see in the background, that's a Great Plains Turbo Chopper. That's how we apply most of our cover crops now. We've done different things in the past. We've, uh, we've tried some with buggies, just mixing it with some fertilizers flinging it out there and tilling it in a little bit with a vertical tillage tool. Uh, this is our favorite and this is what we, we've gone to now. We've also done a drill, but uh, that box right there holds the seed, blows it through the air lines, spits it out the front where it hits like a splash pan and gets a nice spread. And then the whole tillage tool works it in, uh, I'd say one to two inches deep, probably, probably one. There's also interseeding, which I know Mark's been playing with, and I've been watching him. He's actually a neighbor, very close neighbor to us. So that's something we're interested in the future, but it's uh, just not in the cards right now. We don't feel comfortable quite yet with that. My key timings, the radishes we like to have in by September 15th, but of course weather and manure and field conditions, everything happens. So we've gone into October a little bit, and they still do well, but they don't they obviously won't get as big. Annual ryegrass, we aim for October 10th, but we push that back to you. And cereal rye is super easy. We'll, we'll put that on all the way through in November. So this is this last year, a timeline for our, our soybean crop this in 2016. April 15th, I was out there spraying that field. That's uh, annual ryegrass. So then there's about a month later, May 18th, we planted that field. And you can see already things are decomposed and kind of shriveling back. You can see a lot of soil in that second picture. There's uh, just about a week later, May 24th, all the beans are emerging, coming through. And then by June 21st, we're getting pretty close there to canopy and everything's looking real nice. Here's a picture of uh, corn we planted into a wheat and radish cover with fall manure applied. We have row cleaners on our corn planter so that we uh, can clean nice strips there and get that black soil to warm up around your corn plants. I think everybody knows that's why tillage is done. That's why uh, corn, corn just relies on that heat early on to get up and going. You get a strong, uniform start. 
but uh, we still try to do least amount of tillage there as possible. So we just stick with the row cleaners, get that nice strip, get the corn up and going, and we like to leave that mulch in the middle, keep things cool in the summer and hold on to water. That's that picture on the left right there, that shows a, a seed digger. Many of you guys probably use those. And that measures five inches to the top. And I just dropped that in a radish hole is all I did. So I was out there doing a little bit of scouting, looking for you know black cutworm, other damages, when the corn was about V2. And, and I just happened to see that. So I dropped it in there to see how far it would go. And I was, thought that was pretty cool. Dropped five inches. So those radishes, after they're decomposed, that's how big the tuber got. But then you got the tap root that goes much, much deeper than that. Sometimes we plant green on our farm, and what I mean by that is the covers will still be green when we're out there planting, uh, whether it be weather that kept us from spraying at first before we got to planting or whatever else happens. Sometimes it's a management decision. And sometimes we plant brown where we'll go and we'll get that cover crop all killed off and it's decomposing pretty well before we plant. So why I use cover crops or green manures, as you could call them. It adds value to our land. It adds dollars in my pocket and stewardship. And it makes farming fun. Uh, farming was not something I always wanted to do. I actually went to college for engineering and decided I didn't like that and then came back to the farm and ended up falling in love with soil health and everything that is involved with that. So. This really is what has made farming fun for me and why I chose to, uh, to be a farmer. So questions, anybody? I think we'll hold the questions for the panel. Okay, listen to Dan, he's the man. Thanks Andy, let's give him a round of applause.